Here's a video of our new, uh, at least, 2017 Honda Accord. Had it for about eight months. The uh, car, or actually since the first of the year, so I guess it's more like seven months. I uh, just wanted to make a little video of the car. It's, uh, it's uh, 2017. There's a couple of uh, somewhat unusual features with this particular car. First of one, which I think should be obvious, it's a coupe. And uh, this is the last year of the coupe. That's one of the reasons we bought a 2017 instead of a 2018. Uh, basically, uh, because we wanted a two-door. We're not making any more two-doors. And the other thing, I guess, is the most unusual. This is the EX model. Is this is a six-speed manual transmission, which uh, you know I'm sure is not very, very common. Although I do commend Honda for continuing to make them. Um, as a 2017, this is uh, 40 years since my last Accord. I had a uh, 1977 Accord, which was the second year of production. Back then, the Accord was uh, just a single model, to the best of my knowledge. It was a two-door hatchback, folding rear seats, and uh, one of the interesting things about it is that, uh, at least to me, is back in the day, my 77 Accord had uh, was uh, weighed right at 2,000 pounds, came with a five-speed manual, just instead of a six-speed manual like this car. Like I said, 2,000 pounds, length was, I believe, 160 inches memory serves me right from looking it up and like I said weighed 2,000 pounds this car is 30 inches longer and uh, and uh, well over another thousand pounds heavier uh, both four cylinders my 77 Accord I think put out a whopping 75 horsepower but <clears throat> Because it only weighed 2,000 pounds, it was actually quite a fun car to drive. I drove it cross-country numerous times, and uh, we plan to do the same with this car. And so, anyway, so you, what you're looking at is, you know, unfortunately I don't have any real pictures or video of my 77 Accord. At the time, well, this, uh, uh, the ability to take a... Uh, video when anything other than 8 millimeter format was somewhat limited it well, basically didn't exist at least not commonly available so you know it's just just what it is as far as equipment goes obviously this car is much much better equipped we've got you know remote entry electric windows seats and all of that sort of stuff uh, you know uh, one of the reasons we wanted at least the EX model was so we could get uh, Apple CarPlay and whatnot, which everybody seems to make such a big deal about Apple CarPlay, but to my view, from the best I can understand it, I mean, from what I've seen, that's not particularly useful. I mean, maybe it is to some people, but hey, just stick my, I mean, it, <clears throat> it doesn't allow me to do anything any easier it seems to me than I can just do with my phone uh, so I'm not particularly enamored with it one other thing I wanted to mention is when we saw it one thing I do like about this car is the fact that it's not turbocharged the 2018's are except for the base model are all turbocharged and with the base model you couldn't get a sunroof like this one has and we wanted a sunroof the other thing that I've heard is that uh, wanted to comment on this versus the 2018 is the fact that this car has that dual display the bottom one being a touch screen and the top one being uh, you know just informational and having all you know showing the radio and all that other stuff um, I know it's come in for a lot of criticism but when I saw the 18s and for that matter a lot of other cars 
they have the display just stuck on top of the dashboard. It almost looks like an afterthought. To me, this one looks a lot more integrated, and I like it a lot better. Uh, you know, at least from a from a uh, aesthetic standpoint, it just seems a lot better. So, the fact that we're able to get a 2017, it's a four-cylinder, but still pretty peppy. Uh, a 2017 without the turbocharged engine, with a sunroof, uh, with the remote entry. And with most of the you know the good stuff was, uh, was to me a, an extra bonus so once the 18s came out and I found out they were virtually all going to be turbocharged I said we decided now nah, we're going to buy it we're going to look around for 2017 and probably because this was a five, six speed manual it lingered on the lot for quite a while and so we were able to purchase it well into the 2018 model year without any issues so anyway that's the car uh, you know I hope it turns out to be as reliable as my uh, uh, well my other Hondas even though we've had this car uh, excuse me it's been 40 years since my last Accord that doesn't mean it's been 40 years since our last Honda one thing about the the 77 Accord that was my first uh, ownership experience with a, with a non-American car and what I found out right away to my delight was what a good car could really be and I'm not talking about speed or anything like that you know I like sports cars what I was talking about is the fact that it was so well put together, it ran so well, so smoothly. It just told me that my previous car, which was a Pontiac Trans Am, what a basically pile of junk it really was. Uh, I mean, it basically took me from being an advocate for American cars to never have, you know, after that, never even basically setting foot in a, in a showroom for an American car. So since, from that point on, I, and then after I got married a few years later, we've only bought foreign cars. We've either bought Hondas or Toyotas. We've been through Camrys, Corollas, uh, in terms of Toyotas, we've had CRVs, or a CRV, we've had, uh, uh, Civics and uh, let's see, I'm, you know, I'm maybe missing a few, but that's okay. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that you know, I just you know, the American car companies just with the with the garbage they were turning out in the 70s, and basically just lost interest in them all. You know, so right now we have this car. I have an S2000 and the Honda uh, Civic 2007. I also have an old Corvette, but uh, that was purchased many, many years ago, even prior to my, to my initial uh, Accord back in 1977. So, so anyway, this is, um, this is what it's come to, and so far we've been very, very pleased. The only thing about this car that I wish were different and I guess time will tell about this and that has to do with the uh, engine itself. The engine I believe is very very similar to what we had in the CRV a 2.4 liter 4 cylinder but the CRV was old enough that it, it was not direct injected and that car that car lasted for almost 300,000 miles and in fact <coughs> it was uh, it was only totaled last year when somebody on the road while I was parked backed up into me and smashed my car or smashed the, the front end of the car. It's interesting because the, the person that backed into us had a car with a backup camera and I was just, I was stopped. Now the, the person that backed into me was, uh, was at least honest enough to admit that it was his fault not mine because it looked bad I was 
stopped on the street waiting behind him when he decided to put his vehicle in reverse and just before I could even react he just smashed right into me destroyed our our CRV but anyway uh, I kind of got off point here this this car has a direct injected version I believe of that engine I'm not real enamored with direct injection I just think it's probably going to be a, a, a an issue that may require more maintenance than what I'm used to with Hondas and, and Toyotas. One of the beauties of Hondas and Toyotas we've earned over the years is uh, that I found out over the years is that once you buy the car new, you just change the oil in it, do a lot of other maintenance items, change the oil, change the uh, antifreeze periodically, you know, replace the brake pads. And, so far, other than, let's see, I think the CRV was recalled one time because of the Takata airbag issue. But other than that, never had to go back and pay another visit to the dealer for any reason. You know, here I sit, sat with a, in the, in the case of the CRV, a uh, uh, car with almost 300,000 miles on it, ran fine as the day that it was, it was smashed, as the day we picked it up. Our Camry, Camry we had had almost 200,000 miles on it. Same thing, never an issue at all of any kind. It's amazing, and uh, I do hope I get that kind of service. That we get that kind of service out of this car. I do have a couple of other things I want to talk about. Probably do it when we're driving the car. Uh, has to do with some of the tech and so forth. I'm all for tech, but uh, but uh, the fact of the matter is, is that one of the things that bothers me a little bit about the tech that's on the car, whether it's, uh, you know, the, uh, and this car doesn't have adaptive cruise control or radar cruise control, or it does have some blind spot monitoring and, you know, lane keep assist or anything, it doesn't have that, but. Some of those things <clears throat> that do kind of bother me is the fact that uh, if that encourages people to pay less attention to their driving and, and you know, rely on the tech, i.e. when uh, the gentleman backed into my CRV, then the tech is of no value. I mean, you know, even, this car, even though this car has a backup camera, I routinely look behind me before I back up, and I think everybody should. Uh, you know, don't rely on the camera, don't rely on the tech, uh, you know, when the, the camera pops up when you turn on your right turn signal on this car, shows it on the screen in there, but still I always look at my blind spot whether I'm turn, whether I'm changing lanes or turning to the left and the right, or, or the right, it doesn't make any difference. And <clears throat> if the tech encourages people to not pay attention to their driving or pay attention a little less to their driving then you have de defeated the whole purpose of the tech I uh, one of the things I other things I do is I I shoot regularly guns you know and uh, one of the first things I was taught is never ever rely on a mechanical safety use it but never rely on it and I would say the same thing about the safety tech that's out there these days, is use it, it's great, but never ever rely on it. And uh, whether that means cruise control, uh, you know, the radar adaptive cruise control, your automatic braking, whatever it is, you know, if you're any less attentive to your driving, when you are, you know, because of that, you think it's gonna save you, you're just a, a wreck waiting to happen or an accident waiting to happen anyway uh, let's uh, continue this when we're driving thanks bye okay here we are out for a drive in the 2017 Accord Coupe uh, the car's got a little over right maybe a hundred miles over 4,000 miles on it at this point we're out in the country here enjoying a drive <clears throat> right now I'm not gonna it's not going to be too long. We'll show you a shot of our this dual screen thing here. Maybe not ideal, but 
personally, I prefer the look of this, the more integrated look of this than the 2018 and a lot of other cars where the thing, the screen just appears to be tacked on top of the dash, just almost like an afterthought. Uh, now there are some downsides, I will admit to this, the lack of a volume knob, which was really kind of stupid on Honda's part to delete that. But it's it's not insurmountable. It's, it's an inconvenience, but it's not insurmountable. Um, so anyway, I, you know that uh, you know if, one thing. I, maybe it's impractical, but it's always occurred to me that if you know if you're going to put a screen up there that tack, it looks like it's tacked on, why not make it tacked on? Why not make it where you can just plug your uh, your iPad or what? whatever directly into the car instead of having you know a, a tablet that's going to have effectively a screen and in a couple of years is going to be obsolete anyway maybe that would be a way to uh, do away at least with a portion of the planned obsolescence built into cars of course I know that's not the agenda of your car makers they want it to be obsolete and complete here so that's probably just a thought a couple of other things I just want to talk about while we're in the car here is one is this this is the first car we've ever owned that has uh, uh, electric seats or power seats and I'm 6'2 and I've never been in a car that I don't drive with a seat all the way back my wife tends to drive much closer to the, to the steering wheel than, than, than I do and this car does not have although it has power seats it has memory seats it does not have memory seats and, you know, that's, that might alleviate part of the problem. But, you know, every car I've ever gotten into, all I do is just find the little lever, hit it, and instantly I'm in the rearmost position. Here, you know, it's kind of a mild annoyance to uh, either before I get in or as I get in, or even if I had a memory seat, you just sit there and watch the thing go ever so slowly what I could have done in a nanosecond it takes not an earth shaking amount of time but you know some time it just seems to me to be wasted the other comment I have about you know these 18 way 25 way 100 way power seats is that yeah it kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, of uh, you know TV got 800 channels and you only watch two of them you know <laughs> I mean what's the point you know so yeah you may have a million uh, different positions but you only use one or two of them so uh, you know I mean I'm just you know I'm just not that uh, it doesn't make that much difference to me uh, the other comment I was gonna make is had to this car does not have navigation built in look we both have iPhones you know, Google navigation or, you know, works just fine. You know, I don't need to see the, the streets on the screen as I'm going to it. The, the, the Google lady or man, whoever, whatever, whatever voice you choose. I mean, my gosh, they tell you exactly where to go and where to turn and, you know, how many feet it is to the next turn. I mean, you know, and it works for me. So, don't really see any point in it. Uh, so, that's that's kind of all there is to it. You know, we have had four-door cars in the past, but we both really wanted a coupe. This is primarily my wife's car. She drives drives it to and from the office, which, which is good. But she wanted a two-door car. Uh, and, uh, you know, quite frankly, that's... It surprises me these days that that so many people want four doors and like the, the I guess the convenience of them. That was seems like a throwback to my father's days. You know, he insisted on large station wagons. Nowadays, it seems to be goes around comes around whether you call it an SUV, a CUV, a, or whatever the, the 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 term du jour is. Utility. These utility vehicles are just modern day station wagons. People hate it when they say that, but I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> so.
So anyway, uh, here we are, like I said, out in the country. Just, uh, just uh, some of my opinions about cars and whatnot. So.